If you're an Adobe Premiere Pro user, you've probably seen some pretty awesome updates rolling out lately, including but not limited to GPU hardware acceleration. And this is awesome, meaning that we can utilize our computer's graphics card to drastically improve rendering times, playback speed and quality, and more. So today I'm showing you exactly what that looks like, the difference between GPU hardware acceleration and your typical software, what that looks like in real time, as well as give you some tips and tricks to make sure you're set up properly and utilizing every little bit of your system. Let's get started. We're jumping right into our review in our tutorial to show you how to utilize your GPU and also showing you the differences between the original software and just what your graphics card can help do in Premiere Pro now. But I wanted to show you guys just a few things and go over a few issues that you might be having. The very first thing I want you to check is what version of Premiere Pro are you using? And all you have to do is go up here to help and go over to about Premiere Pro down there. Make sure you're using version 14.3 or later. And the reason for this is if you are using a previous version, it might not be compatible with your particular setup. And that's exactly what happened to me. So what was happening to me is I would get all set up and ready to render. I would go down to here in our encoding settings and right here where it says hardware encoding, this would show software encoding, but it would be grayed out. I would have no option to change it to hardware whatsoever. And when I highlighted it, it basically said that make sure you check your computer requirements to see that you have compatible equipment and basically that it's good enough. And my computer is absolutely good enough. So it was a bit frustrating. And I knew that it was working for some people, but for my setup, I guess it just took an extra update for me to be able to utilize that hardware acceleration. So make sure you're at 14.3 or after, and that's the very first thing I want you to check. So from there, let's make sure that Premiere Pro is actually utilizing our graphics card. And to do that, to set this all up, what you wanna do is go up to file, down to project settings, and then go over to general. And right in your first tab there, you're gonna see renderer or video render and playback. Make sure that this is set to, there it is, Mercury Playback Engine GPU Acceleration CUDA. And our other option here is Mercury Playback Engine Software Only. And that's gonna be your only option if you don't have a graphics card in your computer. But if you do and you have a capable graphics card, make sure that that GPU acceleration is enabled. And that's gonna give you benefits again to the playback as well as the rendering. So with that on, you go ahead and click OK, and you're set up and ready to go. So now let's have a look at a few tests and show you the differences that the GPU acceleration makes compared to the software. And I think you're gonna be quite blown away by this as I was. And guys, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Okay, so let's jump right into our first test, which is gonna be our software encoding. I'm gonna do three tests, one software, one hardware, and then an extra bonus one, giving you a tip on how you can speed it up even faster. So we're gonna use the same 4K file, about 10 minutes long, a target bitrate of about 85, with an overall size approximately six and a half gigabytes. So let's go ahead and start that first test. Obviously for the sake of time, I'm gonna speed it up and let's watch in real time as the computer uses its resources differently for each test. Now in this case, and as usual, our CPU is taking the brunt of most of the work, almost being maxed out a lot of the time. I do have 64 gigabytes of RAM, and in this case, it looks like it's using about 25%. Our GPU is kicking on about 15 to 30%, it looks like, but keep in mind that it also might be helping out with other processes that the computer is doing. Now it might sound obvious, but make sure you have any and all programs and applications closed that you're not using to help your computer dedicate more resources to this rendering process. This is not only gonna help speed it up, but it's gonna give you less errors as well. And that just about does it. So our first software test completed in a time of 22 minutes and 20 seconds. Not bad, but let's check out our second test. So here we go again, and for our second test, the only thing that I'm changing is just adding that GPU hardware acceleration, as you can see here. Same file, same everything. Let's see how it does. So once again, if we look at our system resources, we can see our GPU now taking a heck of a lot more of that work. Our CPU is using considerably less, and it's just a great balance. And as you can see, we are burning through this process a heck of a lot faster. And let's check it out. At the end of the day, this hardware acceleration did the exact same file in a time of 
13 minutes and 13 seconds. An incredible 9 minutes and 7 seconds faster. What a difference. Time is money, so I'm going to show you one more tip that you might be able to utilize to help you finish and render your projects even faster. So this time what we're doing is rendering right to my SSD drive. It's my main smaller hard drive that I have my operating system on and it allows me because of its crazy fast read and write speeds to have an overall faster and smoother experience. However, you might note that SSDs are quite pricey, so you probably don't have a huge one. You might have an SSD as your main drive and then your standard HD drives like I do for storage. So in this test, we're comparing a render time between the HD drive that you just saw using hardware acceleration to the SSD drive that I'll render to and then transfer over to my storage later. So long story short, you guessed it, it's even faster and completed in a time of 12 minutes and 13 seconds, exactly one minute faster than my HD drive and 10 minutes and seven seconds faster than our original software test. So a huge hats off to Adobe for all these updates rolling out, a huge welcome time saver, and just a great utilization of what we already have. So for those of you who don't use Adobe products who are just curious about this stuff, they do have a monthly fee associated, but all these updates and awesome things that they're including all the time, really for me makes it worth every single penny. If you are interested about grabbing some Adobe products that I've mentioned here today, or any of the stuff that I have personally in my computer, I'll leave that stuff in the description for you to check out guys. And make sure you hit that like and subscribe button to become part of the community. And like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.